and welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. Good morning to you. I pray that the Lord has blessed you, that you are finding the favor of God on your life today, and that he remains the constant. He remains the constant. Everything else may fail, but God remains the same. He remains the same. He remains the same. Blessings to each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we are so glad to be a part of what God is doing. God remains faithful. And if I could tell you anything, it would be that God remains faithful and you should count him faithful. No matter what's happening, God remains faithful. Good morning to all of you. Our, our notification came early. Isn't that amazing? But um, we're going to get started. We, we are on, um, today is day 19 of uh, the benefits of knowing God. And today we're talking about be free. And uh, good morning. Hey, y'all. We should remind ourselves constantly that God remains faithful and there are benefits, privileges that we get as the children of God, the sons and daughters of God. There are benefits that you get that other people just don't get. That's why he says, whosoever will, let him come. Those who don't want to come, don't get the benefits. I don't know how else to say that. I mean, I don't know what it sounds like to other people, but there are benefits with uh, our relationship with God. There are benefits in walking with him. There are benefits in knowing him. Uh, I think that was the first scripture that I read to you all. Uh, I didn't put it on here, but I have it over here. And this was the, this was the catalyst, so to speak, for this entire series, the benefits of knowing God. It was Daniel chapter chapter 11, verse 32, um, the last part of it, but I'll read the entire verse. It says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. I won't go by that. Good morning, Mother Irma. Blessings. Uh, it says, but the people that do know their God, the people that do know, hey, Sister Glenda, who do know their God shall be strong. You know, to me, that scripture is so pivotal for the life of the believers. Those who know God, the scripture says, shall be strong. Why are we strong if we know God? Because we understand the benefits that are ours. We understand the ramifications, the parameters, what has been delegated to us. We understand the authority that's been given to us. We understand that song we used to sing, we're soldiers in the army of the Lord. We understand as soldiers, we are being trained, given the tools and the opportunities that we need to be strong in the Lord. He teaches us. The scripture says he teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my fingers, not my hand, my fingers. And when we begin to develop, when we begin to develop and grow into the man, the woman, the son, the warrior, that God has called us to be, then we can say this scripture, the people that do know their God shall be strong. And they're not just going to be strong on their own. They will not be strong without purpose. They will be strong and do. Do exploits. Do exploits. Do exploits. Great and noble deeds. You may be like Gideon. I don't see myself doing none of that. You don't have to see yourself. You just need to be willing to do what God calls you to do. Hey, Sister Clara. We, we just need to be willing to do what God calls us to do. He says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You will eat the good. You will get the best. You will have access to the best. God will cause blessings to chase you down and overtake you. We must believe, begin. Where's my promise book? Get your promise book. Believe what's in the, I, I have, somebody gave me this. Who gave this to me? Somebody gave it to me not long ago. I picked it up. I did. Uh, but we must remind ourselves. I've got some books over here. I can show you some more. But we must remind ourselves. Every promise in the word. We need to, we need to be qualified. And that qualification is we know God. We don't need to know him superficially. We don't need to know him superficially. We need to know him on a level of intimacy that is more than just surface. That word know refers to a depth of intimacy. 
You may know of someone, but you don't know them until you know how they think. You may say, you know me, but you don't know me until you know how I think. And you can be around people for decades and still not know them. Moses said to God, he said, we've only just begun to know you. We've, But he had seen the miracles. He had received the, the commandments, the tables of stone. He had received our words from God. God began to show him himself. He says, God says, I tell you what I do and I call you my friends because I tell you what I do. When God begins to unveil himself, to reveal himself to us. Absolutely, we will, Sister Clara. Amen. So let's look here. And so that was my pivotal scripture, Daniel eleven thirty two. That kind of was the catalyst for this uh, with the benefits of knowing God. We've talked about being sober. We're talking about being free. Why should we be in bondage? Je the song says, uh, Jesus set me free. Why should I be bound? Why? Should I be bound? Some people are bound. Their hands are tied. Their mouths are tied. They, they don't know how to be free. They are so willing to, 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 uh, to, to just relegate their authority to, to someone else or relegate themselves to being weak. The scripture says, let the weak say. Let the poor say. Which means what we speak out of our mouths will determine what we receive. And sometimes we're not saying what God says about us. I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm just talking about, um, I'm just talking about how we need to understand the benefits given to us. When you start a new job, they give you, they let you know what your benefit package is. Beloved, there are benefits available to us. Let's read. I said we pick up at verse 14. Um, from, from uh, sorry, Luke 13. So Luke 13, verse 14 through uh, 17 is where we're going to try to get to today. And then we can continue talking about the benefits and this freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. We don't use our freedom maliciously. We don't use our freedom in arrogance. We want other people to be free too. Let's read on. But the leader of the synagogue indignant that because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, responded by telling the crowd. What did he tell the crowd? He told the crowd, there are six days when work should be done. Therefore, come on these days and be healed and not on the Sabbath. Look at that. This man, this, this leader of the synagogue was angry. The word, and I wanted to give you a definition. I think I wrote it down somewhere. The definition of the word indignant. Feeling or showing anger or annoyance at what is perceived as unfair treatment. They thought it was unfair. It was wrong for this woman to be healed on the Sabbath day. Jesus, I love Jesus, not just because I love him, but his responses always um, brought us to, to think deeper. Let's read on. Hey, Sister Brenda. So, Jesus, the, the, the Lord answered him. So here you have the leader of the synagogue saying, listen, I know y'all need a healing, but don't come on the Sabbath day to get it. Don't come on the Sabbath day to get healed. Come on the other six days. Because they held the, the Sabbath day as more valuable than man. What did Jesus say about that Sabbath day? He said that man wasn't created for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was created for man. So the day itself was not greater than the man, or in this case, the daughter, the, the woman that God created. Here, Jesus says, but the Lord answered him. that He was trying to make the people, the, the leader of the synagogue, didn't want the people to come to be healed except on the days that they relegated. God does not move by everybody else's timetable. He moves on his own. But the Lord answered him and said, hypocrites. Jesus goes for the jugular. He goes straight to it. Hypocrites. What's a hypocrite? Someone who pretends to be something that they are not. They were not concerned about people really being healed. Let's read on. 
Doesn't each one of you untie his ox or donkey from the feeding trough on the Sabbath and lead it to water? He said, listen, you, we're not supposed, you're not supposed to do any work. No work at all. No healing, no nothing. Don't you untie your donkey and let him go get water on the Sabbath day? He says, if you can untie your donkey, take him to get water on the Sabbath day, shouldn't this woman be healed? Shouldn't she be free too? Shouldn't we untie her on the Sabbath day? Verse 16. See, the thing is this. Jesus wasn't just trying to, to, to make them look bad. He wanted them to understand you placing value in the wrong place. You're a hypocrite. You're valuing your donkey more than you value this woman who's been bound these 16 years. You, you, you want to value this day only because she is receiving something that you couldn't give. Let's start with that. But also that you are trying to bring them into bondage to your ideas that are contrary to even the scriptures. Satan has bound this woman. Not even like the donkey that they tied up. Satan has bound this woman, a daughter of Abraham. Satan had her in bondage, had her tied up, had her so she could not ambulate without assistance, so that she could not function as God designed her to. She was bound, right, Janet? The Lord Jesus was giving them a lesson. He was a teacher. You remember I told y'all some time ago, as teachers, we want to take advantage of every opportunity to portray truth, to give truth. Satan has bound this woman, a daughter of Abraham, for 18 years, not just even for one day, like the donkey. She had been bound for 18 years. She couldn't go to get water. She couldn't get free. She hadn't been free. But he says, shouldn't she be untied from this bondage on the Sabbath day? If you untie your donkey on the Sabbath day so he could go get water, your oxen on the Sabbath day so they could go get water, shouldn't this woman be untied from this bondage? When he had said these things, all his adversaries were humiliated. They didn't expect Jesus to come back and give such an applicable example. But the whole crowd was rejoicing over all the glorious things he was doing. The religious leaders were angry and now humiliated. But the people who needed to be healed, who needed deliverance, who wanted to be out of the bondage they were in, they were rejoicing. They were, that's why the scripture says that the common people heard him gladly. Because they want it to be free. There are people who will act angry and behave angry and agitated and frustrated. But they just need to be free. They just needed to be free. They just need to be free. They don't know what freedom feels like. They don't know what freedom looks like. But Jesus came to set them free. Jesus came to set them free. Cousin Sharon, we're glad you're on. We pray that the right person gets an office too. But we know what freedom looks like. Some of you were bound by situations. You were bound in your mind. You were bound by, by traditional thoughts. You were bound by in relationships. You may not have got out of the relationship, but God set you free in it, in the valley of the shadow of death. You, you may have been bound uh, financially, never seeing your way through. You may have been bound spiritually, never being able to get free from those, those mindset and those things that the enemy kept you uh, locked up in. But Jesus set you free. 
I remember some of the things I was bound with, some of the trains of thought, some of the behaviors through depression and heaviness, through, through people lying to me, deceiving me, or misleading me. I remember those things. And how it had me bound in heaviness and depression and lack of joy and hopelessness for years. But Jesus, <laughs> glory to our great God, set me free. He'll set you free too. My time is gone. Tomorrow, we're going to go through some scriptures about this liberty, this freedom that we have as a benefit, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, as children of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that you sent your word to heal us, to loose us from every bondage, to set us free from the ploys, the, 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 the tactics and the deceptions of the enemy. Lord, let your word set us free today. Help us to be free. Help us to believe you for the next, for our greater. Lord, we thank you that your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish everything that you've sent it out to. Lord, we pray for those who need healing. We pray for Sister Clara's uh, uh, daughter, I believe it is. Father, we pray for healing. We pray for Sister Bolin. We pray for Evangelist Hicks. We pray for those who are recovering. Send your word to heal now. Send your word to heal now. We break the spirits of infirmity. We break them in the name of Jesus. Bring healing to their bodies. Let their mouths begin to speak your word and decree and declare that I am healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we thank you that your word will not return to you void and unprofitable, but it will produce what you've sent it out to. Produce in us, dear God. Lord God, we ask you to cover our sons and our daughters, cover our children, cover uh, Kaiva, cover Kasten, cover Lucas, cover the loved ones, God, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, our nieces, our nephews, cover them. Let them excel, dear God. Cause your favor to be upon them in the name of Jesus. Cover uh, 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 Sister Sylvia's sons as they play sports. Let them excel. Order their steps in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your provision, for your hand covering us. Give us confidence. Give them confidence, dear God, toward you. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong on their behalf in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord God, that you're a healer. We receive these things even now. Let your blessings chase us down and overtake us. Father, we will not live in fear. We will not live in despair. We will live in victory. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it and receive it done. So it is in Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody, my time is gone. Thank God for each and every one of you. And I ask you to get your continued prayers. Pray for me. My name is Edna Gray Jameson. Pray for me. Call my name when you pray. I want the will of the Lord to be done and accomplish everything that he has called me to do. But let's pray for one another. Call somebody else's name. You don't have to know all their business. Pray for them what you want to happen in your own life. God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Pray for someone else. All right, got to go. Hey, don't forget to share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. Thank you for watching on YouTube. It'll be uploaded very shortly. And for following on YouTube and subscribing as well as on here on Facebook, I pray that God will bless you and increase you in every way. Don't forget about my book on Amazon. Hopefully I'll get the other book sure, out shortly. I'm working on it. All right. So join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Happy birthday to my brother Luther in case his wife happens to watch. And uh, we have great birthdays in October. My sister's birthday is coming up along with uh, my nephew. But God bless each and every one of you and those who are still celebrating birthdays I don't know about. I pray God will give you many, many, many more years. All right. All right, we're praying for N Natika. I think that's right. We'll be praying for her for traveling grace as well, that God will bring her safely to her destination and the favor of God would be upon her. All right, everybody, y'all join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Right, Sister Janet, time spent in the word of God is never wasted. Here you go. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.